Okay. Hi, everyone. I just had to start a little bit earlier because usually technology never works in my favor. <laughs> so I'm going to try to share my screen. And if someone can just maybe th thumbs up emoji or chat, if you can see it, that'd be great. <laughs> okay, hold on. Can we see this? Oh, amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. So I'm going to start um, the slideshow now. So this is a seminar on how to do well on your interviews for vet school, which is so exciting. <laughs> so just as a little heads up, this uh, seminar is being recorded. So I'm, I'm going to be presenting information that is helpful, but at the end of this seminar, I'm going to show you some packages that I'm offering. If you liked the seminar and want to work more one-on-one -on -one with me, that'd be great. I'm very eager to do so. <laughs> so I'll be posting those at the end of the slide, as well as my QR code that goes right to my profile. And yeah, so you can go on the Accepted Together website for any follow-up questions or any extra practice with me. So a little bit about myself. Hi, I'm Janice. I am a first year veterinary student at the Ontario Veterinary College. I graduated last year from my undergrad of animal biology from the University of Guelph. I did all four years and I got accepted on my first application cycle. And actually during my first application cycle, I actually got ranked one of the highest interview scores. So I'm hoping that something that you can take away from this is that I can help you provide the proper tips and tricks that I used that helped me do well on my interview. And of course, a little side bit, I have a 16 year old Havanese. His name is Nestle, has nothing to do with vet school. I just always love the opportunity to talk about him. All right, let's get into it. So just an overview of the entire application cycle. So I'm sure you guys have already submitted your BIF that had all of your experiences and your reference letters and you did your Casper, that dreading, <laughs> terrible Casper. And I'm sure you guys all did great. And now you guys are anxiously waiting for that brutal long waiting period for your interview. <laughs> I did it last year. I totally understand how long this waiting game is and how ang anxious you are. And listen, I hear you, your feelings are valid, but this is the last step to hopefully I get to see all of your faces next year at the Ontario Veterinary College. So the VMI veterinary medical interview or just the veterinary professional interview, I think is what we called it. It's a multiple mini interview format, but virtually. So the MMIs essentially are separate rooms in person in which you would see the question outside the door. You would have two minutes to reflect on the question and then you would enter the room and there'd be an interviewer there and you'd have five minutes to explain your response. So it's pretty much the exact same thing, except that it's virtual. So you'll be getting a link with the website. I believe it was called Kira's Cure Talent, Cure Platform, something along that line. And it's the exact same thing. So you'll open up the interview. There'll be a question that pops up on your screen. You'll have two minutes to read the question. You have a scrap piece of paper that you're allowed to use. And you can kind of write down your thoughts or what you want to say. And then you'll be automatically entered into this room where you'll have interviewers. Mine were veterinarians. And you will have five minutes to answer your question. And it's only four questions. You only have four different stations. After the five minutes, it automatically moves you into the next room. So you really don't have to do anything. It just automatically moves you. And all of the questions are about you. So for my interview, we didn't have any ethical-based questions because you already did the Casper for it. So they're really just trying to get to know you as an individual. And it's really just your opportunity to shine in five minutes. <laughs> So I just wanted to put a little disclaimer in because what worked best for me in my interview prep might not work best for you. I reached out to other people I knew when I was applying and they gave me advice that personally didn't work for me. I'll still tell you what they did because hopefully it will help you. But I just wanted to put that out there that don't follow what I did verbatim because again, everyone learns differently. Everyone works differently. So I just wanted to say that. I also wanted to emphasize to acknowledge your stress, your success and your accomplishments, because everyone had a different route to get into vet school. And I don't want you to think that you don't have as much experience as someone else, because your experiences are what make you, you. They're what have driven you to want to become a veterinarian. They're what make you want to be an active member in the veterinary community and working with people and animals 
and the environment and society as a side piece. So I just wanted to say that even though you think you only have X amount of animal experience, but you have really cool extracurricular experience, that's amazing. Or vice versa, still amazing. Just wanted to say, no matter what, you got this. You worked really hard on your application to get here, and it's really important to acknowledge that. So when I got asked for an interview, I was terrified. <laughs> so the first thing I wanted to do, because I had no idea where to even start, was to look at the OBC website because I was wanting to know really what made OVC so desirable to me. Is it just because it was the only school in Ontario? Maybe, <laughs> but I wanted to see what other skill sets they had that really made me want to become an OVC alumni one day and say that I learned here for four years under great faculty, great staff, and under great research opportunities. So OVC is really big on One Health, which I'm, if you guys don't know what One Health is, it kind of implements people, animals, and the environment and how they're all interconnected. And veterinarians play a huge role in the One Health community. And they have really cool research articles about that. If you ever wanted to take a look or mention it in your interviews, I just thought it would help me kind of understand why the school has such an amazing reputation. And on top of that, I learned about the curriculum and I looked at the courses that were being taught to see if those were of interest to me. And they were, <laughs> thank goodness. And just the community at OVC. So on top of the great research and faculty and curriculum, the people at OVC, it is such a small, tight-knit community. And they do many things to try to make our social well-being amazing, whether it be through sports or events, even like lunch talks help throughout the school. They really try their best to make vet school a very enjoyable experience. And that's all stuff I found on the website before my interview. And it really just solidified that this is what I wanted to do. Then I reviewed my BIF. So although the interviewers don't have your BIF in front of them, you it's really important to, in my opinion, review your BIF because all the questions are about you. So if you can really be, if you can easily pull out an experience that you've done, it will make your answers a lot easier to say, and it won't be rambling and it won't be all over the place, like jumbling because you know what you did. Nothing in your Biff was a lie. And what I thought was easy for me was to Biff my, to group my Biff experiences together. So for example, if I was trying to think of times where I showed empathy, I would look at my Biff and see experiences where maybe I demonstrated empathy here, whether it was as a camp counselor or when I was working with someone at a clinic and I had to display empathy, whatever it is, I tried to group them together so that if I were to be asked a question like that, I would have answers right away and I would take the two minutes to not freak out and I can kind of jot down what I wanted to say and it would come out much more naturally. After I would group my experiences together, I would try to figure out how all these experiences would make me a good vet. So if the question was, tell me a time you experienced empathy, and I already have all those experiences grouped together, why would those experiences make me a good veterinarian? Why is empathy so important as a vet or in society or as a professional? So I tried my best to kind of relate the questions that I made up to why it would make me a good veterinarian so that I could be explaining to the interviewer that I understand the many qualities and aspects that it takes to become a good veterinarian, and here's how I've proved it. So I guess jumping to my next point was making up personal questions relating to my BIF. So I really searched up general personal interview questions. I'm pretty sure that's the next slide. Yeah. So I looked at general personal interview questions on Google. Like that's it verbatim, general personal interview questions. And I took the ones that related the most to medicine or veterinary medicine without it getting too specific because it's a general personal interview. I would take those experiences, put them in a Word document, and then answer them. But I cannot stress this enough, answer them in bullet points. If you're going to take anything away from this, to, uh, this seminar is to make bullet point answers for your BIF. Do not make paragraph responses because coming across memorized and robotic, it really shows. And the interview will see that. And it kind of comes across unauthentic. When you're talking to your interviewer, I know this is easier said than done, but you want to kind of act like you're talking to your best friend. 
It should come off natural. You should laugh at yourself. I made fun of myself during my interview. And I really think that's what helped because it showed that I wasn't scripted. It showed that I was confident in my answers enough to be able to become personable. So when you look at general personal interview questions, try to find ways that you can take your BIF experiences and say how it will make you a good veterinarian, but in bullet points, no, no full sentences, because as soon as you make full sentences, it becomes more so scripted. So of course, practice. I did not practice every day because as what I said in the previous slide, I didn't want it to come across memorized. There are only so many questions that you can find online or that you can make up without it becoming repetitive. So after I made my Word document and my bullet points, I started to review. So I wrote down photo booth on the computer, and this is something that did not work for me, but was recommended to me. So people said to record yourself because it will help you see any nervous tics you have, or if you're not making good eye contact, or you're going all over the place. My problem with photo booth was I got way too distracted. So I would look at myself and I would see something in the background, or as soon as I made a mistake, I would stop the recording and try again, which you cannot do in your real interview. You can't say like, bye, and then <laughs> reappear. It's real time. It's live. If you make a mistake, you have to work through it. And I guess that was just something that photo booth did not help with me. But what did help were Zoom calls. So it ranged from people that I was very close with, like my mom or my brother or my dad, to people that were so random, like my mom's colleague's son's wife, so that I could prepare the to be uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable talking about yourself to people you're close with, but it's also uncomfortable talking about yourself to a complete stranger. <laughs> Overall, I personally find it uncomfortable talking about myself. So you really, I really needed to work through that uncomfortableness. And I wanted to do it on Zoom because I knew the interview was online. I tried my best to keep practicing as if it was the real thing. So I would go on Zoom. I had two interviewers at a time and I would send them my Word document and I would let them pick any of the, any question for them because you only get four questions on your interview. And we tried doing it like the real thing. So they would ask me a question. I'd have two minutes to, to reflect upon it. And then I'd have five minutes to answer. And I found this the most helpful thing because I was able to find out my nervous tics and if I was rambling, if I was jumbling from people without getting too distracted with myself. So that was the best thing I did. And if any practice I did, it would have been Zoom calls. I would say that I probably practiced maybe every two days when I first got asked for an interview. And then maybe the week before my interview, I would do maybe every other day. I definitely didn't do it every day because it was overwhelming. And I think if I studied too much for it or prepared too much for it, I would almost psych myself out. And also focusing on the public, the public speaking skills I acknowledge during Zoom calls. So I'm one that talks fast. I use hand gestures a lot. Sometimes my eyes would kind of go all over the place. I had a lot of skills I needed to work on. So after getting the constructive feedback from people that were helping me, I would take a sticky note and put it in like right above the camera, right above the webcam that would say, slow down. That way I would be looking at the sticky note the entire time. So it showed that I had good eye contact and it was telling me to slow down. So I was slowing down. But again, I know how nerve wracking the interview experience is. So talking really fast comes from nerves and you only get five minutes to answer. So it's kind of just acknowledging it in the back of your mind that you want to try to talk slow and enunciate your words is really important. And with hand gestures for me, you can see I'm kind of talking with my hands now. I would prop my computer up over like three textbooks. That way I was still able to use my hands, but they didn't see it. <laughs> I knew that hand gestures were out of the question for me. I always talk with my hands and I just wanted to find a way for it to be less distracting. So that's what worked for me. The day of my interview, I had this expectation that I was going to sleep in, make a nice breakfast, go do a workout, 
to just distract myself. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning for my interview. That was at 1 PM. The nerves, I, the, for the nerves, it's, it's one of the most important interviews you're going to have in your professional career. So having ideal expectations is the most important, but despite waking up at 3 AM, I still did no preparation because I didn't want to psych myself out. I knew that the preparation I had done thus far was enough to allow me to shine during my interview. I wore a professional outfit, even though they only see you top, like waist up. I wanted to feel as though I was in a real interview. I had my hair tied back, so I wouldn't be nervously playing with my hair. Again, the message on my screen to slow down. And what is so important is to make plans for after your interview having someone to having someone to see after or something to do after makes the post interview stress much more bearable because after you finish your interview you're then waiting a couple of weeks for your results and once it's done you can always find ways in your head to think that you could have improved or you should have answered something differently but you have to acknowledge that it's out of your hands now you did the best that you could and by doing so, like you're one step closer to becoming a vet. I made plans with my friends for right after my interview so that I could leave the house and not think about it. And that really helped me. And people would be like, how's your interview? How did it go? I would just say it was good. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to think about it. I just want to try to live my life without dwelling on it. Because I know if you guys are applying this cycle, I can almost like relive this pain that you're feeling right now of not knowing what you're doing next year because of how long the waiting period is from when you submitted your BIF to getting asked for an interview. Those months were unbearable for me. I tried to spend those two or three weeks after my interview to not think about it. Easier said than done, but just try to make as many plans as you can. So another disclaimer, when you enter your interview, Take a deep breath, relax, smile. Before my interview, I'm pretty sure About Damn Time by Lizzo had just come out and I played that song on repeat and I had a dance party for maybe 30 minutes before my interview to kind of just hype myself up and make myself more personable when I enter the interview. Nobody knows you better than you do. So don't think that your experiences are selling you short. I didn't have an extreme amount of that experiences entering that school but the experiences that I had were important to me and I learned a lot from them and my extracurricular experiences I personally felt made me stand out so whenever I had the opportunity to talk about something that I thought would have set me apart from other applicants I tried my best to talk about it without crossing the line of being cocky which is really important and kind of a blurry line because talking about yourself is always really awkward. So if I would come up with an experience to describe something that I thought would set me apart, I would explain the fundamentals behind that and explain why that experience is going to make me a good veterinarian and why that experience was really important to me without it sounding like I was the best at this, I did great at this, and I should go into vet school because that experience will make me like an amazing vet. Don't say that. <laughs> I mean, hopefully you wouldn't, but along those lines, no confidence in yourself and your experiences and in your biff than being cocky about yourself. And again, treating it like a conversation, talking to your mom, talking to your best friend, walking in, or I guess going onto the call with a smile goes a long way. I started every interview with the same introduction of like, hi, I'm Janice. I hope you're doing well. Like, thank you for the opportunity kind of thing to show how grateful I was to be there, how appreciative I was to have been asked for an interview and how excited I was to talk about the question that was provided. I know you only get five minutes to answer the question, but taking the 20 seconds to properly introduce yourself and if you have the time to thank them at the end goes a lot further than you might think, which I think is really important. Sorry, I wrote some things down. I just wanted to look at them. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I would just say when, when someone's asking you a question or when you're getting asked the question, try to really focus on what the question's asking. So 
if the question is saying like what or who or when or how, make sure you're answering the what, who, when, or how. I'm not sure if your interview will be the same as mine, but for mine, after the two minutes were up and you were able to enter the interview, the question was still on the screen. So if you ever need to take a second to look at the question and make sure you answered everything, it's really important to do so. And it's really important to pause and think about the question than just rambling on to fill up the time. If you don't fill up the five minutes, that's totally okay. But if you have acknowledged acknowledge that you're done, then you have to sit there and wait, maybe read the question to see if you've answered it is so much better than just talking to fill up time. To know that difference is really important. And I personally think that that comes with practice. So again, as I said at the beginning, I have packages. I know Casper and Biff, that's already been done. I do one session um, calls, which would be 45 an hour, which is anything you really want it to be, whether it's like a ranting session or more tips that I did, or if it's just wanting to do a mock interview, totally up to you. I do an interview prep of three hours. It doesn't have to be three hours at the same time. It can be three hours whenever you want them to be. And within those times, again, it can be whatever you want it to be. More tips, some questions that I found or websites that I found that helped me or a mock interview. So I can do, um, I have a list of questions that I think would be really good practice and I could show them up on the screen and we can do it like a real call. I would have a Zoom call with you. I'd pop the question up. You'd have two minutes to answer to reflect on it, sorry, and then five minutes to answer. We'll go through four questions. And then at the end, I'll tell you your strengths and weaknesses and sort of um, constructive feedback on what you can do to really ace that interview. And yeah, so if you have any more questions, you're, now's your time to ask. I'm really happy to answer. Those are the QR codes to my Accepted Together profile. And I hope to work with you guys when your interview invites come out, which I think is soon. <laughs> so I'll be here for a while. If anyone has any questions, you can either type them in the chat. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Or um, unmute your mic. Oh, maybe I should open the chat box. Would you say that hand gestures are bad to use? Um, I wouldn't say hand gestures are bad to use. I would just say tasteful hand gestures. I'm, I am enthusiastic when I talk. Doing this is distracting to the interviewer. But if you want to just like emphasize a point like one, two, three, that's fine. But if you know, like I know I talk a lot with my hands. So to help combat that, I really wanted them to focus on me and not my hands. So I propped my computer up. That way I could still use my hands without them seeing it. And I think that helped a lot with me. What are your thoughts on talking about an experience that wasn't written on your BIF because it started after you do? Totally fine. They didn't have my BIF in front of them. So it was up to me to talk about my experiences. They don't have your BIF because the questions are very generic. So the generic question gives you the opportunity to dive into your own experiences and talk about them. So as long as your experience is truthful and you have a lot to say about it and you can relate it to why it would make you a good veterinarian or a well-rounded person, then I would say that's totally fine. Okay. Oh, thank you. I am seven exams in right now <laughs> out of 11. So this could be you next year. <laughs> is it a different set of interviewers for each of the four questions? Yeah, I should have mentioned that. So you have four separate rooms and each of the separate rooms would have a different interviewer. So if you totally bomb the first station, no one else will know about it. If you want to use the same example for all four stations, which I did, you can totally use it because the interviewers are different for every room. Did you just do last cycle's VPI like the year before that it was a bit different? Yeah, so I just did last year's VPI. The one two years ago was personal questions where they specifically asked questions off their BIF. Our year was not like that. It was a generalized personal interview. Uh, so they only took generic personal questions that it was up to you to relate it to yourself which is why reviewing your BIF is so important because it's your opportunity to talk about yourself. 
do they email the last week of April as well? When do they send you? Um, mm, I don't remember when they emailed me. I don't think it was in April. I think it was in May, but don't I don't know if it's going to be the same every year. I'm pretty sure I got asked in May for an interview and I got accepted mid to end of June. And I think rejection emails would come out at the same time. Is there any interaction between you and the interviewers? No. So it's really awkward. You have five minutes and you're the only person talking. You walk in or you, you enter the room, sorry, and you introduce yourself. And they, for me, they smiled when I introduced myself. And then they were completely straight faced the entire time which is really hard because I'm someone that likes to play off people's emotions and they didn't exhibit any emotions. So you just kind of have to hope that you're doing the best you can. Except one interview, I did make my interviewer laugh and it was because I was fully making fun of myself. <laughs> and I think that also helped because it showed that I was kind of joking around with them and I couldn't keep the straight face. One room, I had an interviewer that was facing like this while I was talking, which was very weird and it made me very uncomfortable but you kind of just have to work with it they don't talk back to you when I finished my interview I think they said thank you but they don't ask you any follow-up questions or anything like that how much time was there between when you got the interview invite and the actual interview mm, maybe three weeks two and a half three weeks I would say three weeks I think my interview was May 31st and I got asked in May for an interview but beginning of May for that cycle is it just one interview in each room? I had two interviewers in each room. They didn't release our statistics this year for our class. And I feel very bad for the people applying this year because that's very frustrating. So I don't know the average that it took to get an interview. Um, but I think the average was lower because CASP like our year was the first year where Casper was done before the interview invites came out. So they took Casper into consideration, which is why some people got to apply with lower averages. But remember, 200 people get asked for an interview and 100 people get in. So to, to get asked for an interview, you have the grades and you have the Casper. The interview is about you. So try your best to separate your grades from you and your personality and your experiences and try your best to make you get that spot in the 100. No, I don't know what my interview score. I only know my interview score because I um, got asked to do an event for one of the undergrad clubs at the University of Guelph for the pre-vets. Um, I just couldn't attend it. That's the only reason why I found out my score. None of my roommates or my friends um, know their interview score. Also, it's not a score. It was a ranking. Um, but that's besides the point. I think only four of us or five of us know our ranking because we got asked to do something similar to this for pre-vet students. My pleasure. Good luck with your application. I hope to see you here next year. I'll stick around for anyone that has other questions. I hope to work with you guys in the next couple of weeks when you all get asked for interviews. <laughs>My first year of vet school was definitely a, an adjustment. When I first walked in in September, I was overwhelmed because I always done five course semestered and now we're doing like over 11 courses, year round courses too. So like courses don't end in December like undergrad does. But I think I was still in the mindset that I had to be the best to get it like you had to work so hard to get in, but once you're in, the competition doesn't exist anymore. And I think that took a lot of us a really hard time or a long time to get used to. Once we established that, it has been so much better. I would say it's definitely a lot of work. 
and a lot of assessments, a lot of exams, but the community and the opportunities have made it really worthwhile. Am I like currently very sleep deprived? Absolutely. I have 11, 11 final exams. Um, I've already done seven of them. So <laughs> four more to go. Who? Um, but overall, I'm very happy to be here. And days that are hard, I have to like kind of think about how hard it took me to get here and to be really appreciative for it. Are you guys all applying this year? Good luck. You're going to do great. I totally get that. Your feelings are very, very valid and fair. But again, just stay true to yourself. I applied with zero large animal experience. And I'm here. <laughs> so if that means anything to you, all those like misconceptions, you have to get all these different experiences. You don't. So you're totally fine. Thank you so much. I will, I will need it. You guys have any other questions for me? So I can leave my QR code up if you want to um, work with me. <laughs> Thanks so much. Leave the chat open too. Okay. Excited to work with you. So um, Hannah, if you don't have any other questions, I can just um, end the meeting. If you have any other questions, totally fine. You can think about them. I'll still be here. Just wanted to let you know.
Yeah, so you go on to the future me or sorry, not future, the accepted together website, and you would search for my name, and then you just click that green button that sends to send me a message, and then we would find a time that works best for both of us, and then I would send you a Zoom link, and we would work together at that time, and we can do as many as you want. Do one, then realize you don't like it, or you can do one and realize you really liked it and do more. Um, so yeah, you just go on the Accepted Together website. There's a QR code there, or just type it up yourself. Um, and then you search my name, send me a message. Right now, I'm very deep into exams, but I'm done April 28th. Starting April 29th, I'm going to start posting my availability online, which you can also see on my profile. So if you want to see, again, my packages or what days I already have available or what days I have booked, you'd go on the page and just scroll down. You'll see a calendar of which slots are available, or you can just shoot me a message on accepted together and we can find a different time that's maybe outside of the schedule if that works best for you. My pleasure. Good luck with your application. I hope I see you soon and seeing your face at OVC next year.